record. All right. Okay. Uh, so like I said, my name is Lee Hicks. This is my third quarter being a noise intern. Um, and then this quarter, my mentor was Mrs. Nora, Rachel Nora. And this is my presentation. <clears throat> Let's see. So one of the things I did this quarter was um, I assisted in a modular class. Um, I've done this for the past three quarters, so I'm very familiar with it now. Um, it was um, a modular class with Thinkum Samuel, um, and it consisted of a 0910 class, 0930, 0931, and then 1315. Um, what I do in this class is I just walk around um, a few times a day and make sure the students um, didn't have any questions, and if they did, I'd help them uh, walk through their course. Um, Something new that I did this quarter was um, at the end of every class, I would go ahead and just mark their progress and make sure that they're on track doing what they need to be doing in order um, so that they're able to complete their class or their course on time. So that was nice just to be able to, you know, work with them and make sure that they're, um, you know, progressing. And then something else I did this quarter was I worked with my mentor and um, I did a Canvas course building. So we basically kind of rebuilt um, the 0910 uh, pre-algebra class. And my main job for this was to create the assignments. So I'd kind of create the homework assignments, the quiz and the tests. And I actually kind of have a video of what I would, um, like kind of that process of what I was doing. Let's see, this will play. So here I am in the MyLab math. Um, and what I would do is I just go to, to the course tools and then I go ahead and click on the assignment manager and then it would pull up all the courses I have. So here's what I had. There were, um, I believe, 31 homework assignments. Um, there were 10 quizzes, and then there were four tests. And after every number of um, homework assignments, there would be a quiz. And then after that, there would be a test to do. And then here I am uh, just showing you all the assignments. I'm going to go ahead and um, go into one just to show you like the process of how I built it. Here, I'd go ahead and name it. For this one, I named it um, Homework Section 2.1. Then I press Next. And then here's where I'd go ahead and add all the questions in. So as you can see, there's about 21 questions listed there. Um, I would go ahead and choose which chapter I was doing. So um, this one, I believe, was Chapter 2. And then I'd also choose the section. And this one was 2.1. So let's select those there. So it was integers. And then it was also understanding integers. And then depending on the chapter and the section, I'd go ahead and choose an objective. And for this one, the objective was translate words into numbers and symbols. And from there, it would give me um, different questions I could add to the assignment, just depending, just to see um, <clears throat> which would be best suited for the assignment. Um, and I could hover over them and then see which ones I thought would uh, go well with the assignment and then add them in. So I'd uh, check the box and then I press add. I'm actually going to go ahead and pause here because for quizzes and tests would be a little bit different. Um, so there would be an option um, for a button that says pool. So let's say I had three questions that are pretty similar. I choose the pool button and then um, it would give, um, it would like have three different questions that it would distribute to students. So basically each student would um, get like a different, sorry, hold on. So each student would get one of those questions. So it'd kind of be randomized. So if students were working together, they wouldn't get the same question. They wouldn't be able to kind of like cheat off each other, basically, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, there'd be that option to pool. And then I could just press add. And then uh, go to press next. And then on this last page, really the only thing I would uh, need to make sure is that the button at the bottom was checked, which basically allowed um, instructors to import this assignment and so that they were able to use it. So that's what that video was. Um, and then this next, the next thing I would do was um, I'd work on writing problem solving activities. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that link and bring you to some of the assignments I worked on. And these are basically just things that the students would work on um, like with each section and they would turn in. So let's click on mod two, just show you an example. 
Um, so yeah, for this one, it basically just like a worksheet that the students would work on. Um, for this one, it's working with like the rules, um, the signs, and then PEMDAS, and then also working with rounding for the students. So that this is something that they would just like, um, they would write this down and then they would hand this in. Okay, and then something recently I did was um, I went to MathFest and MathFest, it was held in Philadelphia um, and there were a whole bunch of different like seminars and games and lectures and presentations. Um, there were a few that stood out to me. One of them was this, there was an estimathon. Um, and at the estimathon, it was basically like a game where you would like, um, for example, like there's how many times does the word na appear in this in the song Hey Jude, and then have to guess the answer in an interval. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the exact answer was. I don't remember, but let's say it was like um, 240 was the minimum and then 270 was the maximum. And then we'd submit it and then we'd get points based off of our answer. And we actually got second place, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that was something that was really exciting to do at MathFest. And then another thing that we did, um, some students from UNO, they did poster presentations. Um, they did this one about developing effective supplemental instruction in general education mathematic courses. So it was nice to just um, listen to them present their uh, poster and then see a whole bunch of other people have posters as well and just walk around and look at them. And then another one I went to was the history and future of logic puzzles. And um, basically the speaker was just describing the importance of logic puzzles. And then they also had like examples that they encouraged the audience to participate in and participate in, sorry, and walk through and work through, which is nice. And then there were some <laughs> lectures that um, I didn't quite understand. They kind of went over my head. Um, and it was actually pretty refreshing because it just reminded me um, how much I have yet to learn. For example, this one was called um, how non-commutative algebra points towards uh, quantum geometry. I actually think I heard Brad talking about it earlier. Yeah. Um, this, one was, <laughs> this one was very confusing. I really didn't understand much about it, but yeah, it just reminded me how much I have yet to learn. Um, and yeah, just how like broad math is and how it's not just like adding and subtracting. There's just so much, at, like there's so much to it. Um, and it's like such a universal thing as well. And also just being at Math Fest, just being surrounded by people who love math was re really like an incredible thing to witness. Um, and then some of my takeaways. So um, I got, when I was doing the course building, I got to look behind the scenes and see what it was like to like be an instructor and to build the courses and how much actually goes into it and how much work that takes. And then also just, like I said, how much I have yet to learn when it comes to math and how um, I'm just excited to continue on my journey learning math. And I'm also just wanna say I'm thankful for my mentor um, just for working with me and also being patient and then giving me advice like for math fest and also just for school in general. And I'm really looking forward to uh, the next quarter. All right. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about uh, how 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 you guys got to go to Math Fest and just the experiences there. So thank you so much for sharing that. All right. I'm just going to add while you're setting up the next one. Yeah. Um, the work that Lee did on the the um, algebra course, the assignments that she built, I am importing those in now, and they will run me live on fall quarter for the online 0910 students. So That's the great. online 0910 students will be really taking Lee Hicks's. So yeah, and I Lee, made a couple yeah. tweaks, but overall, um, we, awesome. we designed all the homework questions, all the quiz questions, all the test questions, and so um, I, I'm I'm like halfway through all the importing. So I have to import and tweak to get it logged into Canvas correctly. Yeah, but um, that'll be starting in September. Lee's class. Yeah, Lee, you're so far ahead of some instructors in like knowing how to do that stuff. I think I learned in like 2018 how to do what you just did. So that's really good. Well, it wasn't around before that much. Well, yeah, but that, yeah, we used to, I was just cleaning my office out the other day and I used to give homework on paper and yeah, it's different now. All right, good. Well, thank you so much, Lee. Um, looks thank like you. we have Chase next, Chase Reader, and I'm going to just, okay, I'm going to pin this. 
so it will not record a black screen. Um, Okay, so Chase. Okay, wait, and now I have to, sorry. I'm going to share this, I guess. I'll, I don't know what's better to, to record the PowerPoint or the. Yeah, I'm just, whatever. I'm just thinking about the recording. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, then whatever. Yeah, oh, Chase can. What you can do is you can record Chase's presentation and then just and then include this. The yeah, we'll record. Yeah, so if you're able to kind of like you turn to it to wherever Chase is going to be. All right, there you go. <laughs> do you want me to sit here and like click it through, or do you want to be do you want to be the one to do it? <laughs> You'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Just a space bar. I think just space bar or right arrow will do it. Okay. I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> In case I get it wrong. Awesome. All right. Hello. My name is Chase once again. Uh, so I'll be covering what I've learned as a noise intern uh, this summer quarter. Uh, I had a general theme uh, when I was making this presentation. Uh, and then I kind of go into like the specifics of what I did in the class, but my general theme is going to be like um, stepping out of your comfort zone, inspiration and motivation uh, for myself and for the people that I worked with. So uh, you'll, I'll kind of uh, tell you how that relates to everything as I go through. Uh, so first off, yeah, stepping out of your comfort zone. I wanted to start with this slide just because I felt like it was the most important to me from this whole um, internship as a whole. Um, because initially doing this was kind of stepping out of my comfort zone. I had never considered myself as somebody who could uh, come into a math class and even just like, you know, go to people when they have questions and help them. Uh, nevertheless uh, come up and do like uh, small problems and explanations in front of the class. Uh, that was definitely one thing that uh, was a little different for me, but I can't say that I didn't like it. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a good time and I think it's made me more of a confident person, which I think is great, um, which ties into my next point, which I think the confidence that I would gain from doing this, I wanted to be reflected in like the students. Um, I felt if I was confident coming up and showing them how to do things, and I was confident working with them one-on-one, -on -one, that it would improve their overall confidence and make them feel more solid in their performance as a whole. I'm trying to move the video panel because it's blocking some of your text. What would I be without my mentor? <laughs> there we go. Maybe awesome. 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 So yeah, I have a little, a little timeline. Um, well, actually, no, that's not a timeline. That's in the correct, in the correct order. Um, but being approached to apply for noise um, was the first, and then getting up and in front, and then acknowledging and going to Philly, uh, all were kind of stepping out of my own comfort zone. Um, uh, oh, oh, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm just going to go over kind of what I did in class. So I had three classes um, this summer quarter. I had a technical math class, um, which was a math class kind of centered around like the trades, I guess. Uh, I actually took it when I was a senior in high school. So I kind of knew what was going on, um, but it was kind of like difficult to, it was a modular class. So I would come up and help them. Like it wasn't a lecture class. So I didn't always know what was going on. They're all, all at their own pace. But a lot of the problems were kind of like scattered material. Um, so like one time you could be doing a big word problem where you have to find out how many inches were in this cube product, like how many cube inches were in this product, but it, the product was in feet. So first you have to convert it and then you have to divide it all out, you know, but then it could go to like measure this and then temperature, and electricity. So that was fun to try to figure out all of that on the fly. Um, 
that class, I think I had a lot of uh, improvement in. There was a uh, one student in particular who had a, a disability, so I had to really like think about what I could teach him to make his experience better. Um, for example, nobody ever taught him long division. Um, so for a lot of the complex like fraction problems where you would have to convert to a fraction, it's hard to describe this stuff. It was, I can't think of the questions on the fly. There was so much going on, but pretty much he didn't know long division, right? Um, and he needed to know long division um, in order to effectively complete these problems. Uh, his method was counting how many times it went in, like you would write it all down, right? Um, I think it was just because nobody took the time to teach him long division, uh, which I did, and he got a lot better. So that was a great feeling, and I think I really helped him. Uh, yeah, sorry, I went on a tangent, but that was one of my classes. The other class was a modular class with uh, Mr. Stanley here. That class was interesting. A lot of people were very shy um, and did not want um, assistance. They would either call um, Mr. Stanley over for their exam passwords, or there was a few who would call me over, but um, really what I did mostly in that class was set up uh, weekly check-ins for them, um, just uh, make sure they're on the right track. I mean, you did do a number of uh, tests for these. Yeah, students. oh yes, I did do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was probably the most effective thing I did was the test reviews. And I think it did um, encourage them to come up to me later in the class to uh, ask for help for their future assignments. Uh, I wish I could have done a test review with every student. I don't, I didn't have that. Yeah, I just did not. Um, so some needed it more than others. Yeah. There's obviously time constraints. You yeah. Work with someone given time. As I didn't want every he told me to. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then in my lecture class with Mrs. Van Hook here, um, that was, I would probably say my most enjoyable class. So my responsibilities in that class were, um, first I would just come up and start giving small presentations about the problem and how to work through the problem. And I was trying my best to make sure they understood why things did things, um, like, um, like factoring why you can't, for example, last class uh, yesterday, we were doing some review and why you couldn't like cancel out X's when it was like X minus five, X plus six, like um, over, and you can't cancel out the X's. Everybody's nodding right now. We yeah. all know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 It's hard to visualize these yeah. things. Um, we'll say what I'm visualizing. Um, that's what, what I started doing in the beginning of the quarter. Um, and then later on, she started giving me her um, like check-ins at the end of class and then her um, exams. And this was probably my most enjoyable thing because uh, since I had an hour and 45 minutes in the class, I could really just go and write like long, thoughtful, like explanations to all the problems that they got incorrect and why it was wrong. And they were on the right track, how they could have corrected. Um, I'm having trouble uh, explaining this one as well, but pretty much any question that they had gotten incorrect, I would write a like three sentence or more accompanied with like arrows and equations of how it was supposed to be done. And I think it was really effective. Um, obviously, I didn't work with that class that I was doing that work for. That was her other class. So I couldn't see if it helped, but I think they all passed. Eight out of eight. They all passed, so. I think it works. <laughs> I'll take some responsibility oh, yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. There we go, perfect. Cool, uh, so here's just a little slide of what I learned working with the students. Biggest thing is adapting my thought process. Um, so coming into it, I did not realize the amount of students who were working with a lower level of math, like um, like a like a ninth grade level of math, um, coming into like a college level. So like 
things that I just knew, they didn't. So I had to think about that and then think about how I could say things um, to make them understand or think about what I would want to hear if I was in their position. Um, I think I got pretty good at it uh, by the end. Yeah, that was, that was definitely one of the biggest things I had to overcome. You work with at least one student in the time tables. Yes. And there's probably several more. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I do wish that we had more time to just like, I don't know, maybe like get flashcards and just, what is this time? To, what is this? The over and over and over. But that's uh, usually what a high school and below years are for. So. Unfortunately, we don't have this time, so just got to think of other solutions, but that would be nice. Um, what I learned at MathFest. Uh, so this was another big motivation and inspiration thing for myself personally. Um, going into MathFest, uh, as you can see, I was unsure of what to expect. Um, I knew that I was more interested in like the theories and um, like concepts of math um, rather than the teaching side. I really like teaching and I really think math is cool. Um, I don't think I'm going to be a math teacher one day, um, but I like them separately and I can put them together if I need to. Um, so I did uh, go to more of the theory, like the non-communicative, that one that we've all heard about now. Um, I thought I was going to get something cool out of that. Um, I don't think anybody did except for maybe five people in the world. Um, but it was still really cool to hear about. And I definitely pretended like I knew what they were, they were saying. So, <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. Um, but yeah, really, it just kind of opened my eyes to what could be like the experiences that could be had, like um, getting out of your comfort zone trying new things and just um, really uh, just it was a cool professional experience. I really liked it um, and it motivated me to keep going and learn more and do more. I think I just said my reflection uh, without switching to the next slide, but that was my reflection. Um, I hope I entertained you guys. <laughs> yeah, so like Jay said, he, he was in my, um, he helped with my math 0931 class in this classroom. And yeah, it really, some of the feedback he gave on those worksheets we don't all have time to do that with all you know 80 students that we might have so i really appreciated i didn't have 80 i had much less than that this summer but um i appreciated him um being able to give them that detailed feedback because yeah i really do think it made a difference so. all right uh we're gonna have abby morton next she worked with michelle um jansen griswold and you guys pre-recorded her presentation because she's not able to be here. So let me just get my um, technology fixed here. I have this screen pinned, remove pin. Okay, now I'm gonna share. Okay, so I'm gonna press play and we're gonna see Abby's presentation. Hi, I'm Abby Morgan. I was, this is my third quarter here at the Noise Internship. And this is sort of my presentation for, for this quarter with Michelle was my mentor. So I got a new switch of pace and I really have enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so I'll just talk about what I've done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the main thing I did this quarter was um, tutor in the in class with Michelle's pre-algebra lecture class every Tuesday, Thursday from about 10 to 12.20. Um, 
a college algebra as well, but that change. Um, flexibility, very important. <laughs> but so a little bit of what I did, I had some tutoring hours, some students would set it up, but it wasn't a big thing that I did. Um, another thing was just walking around during homework time and um, helping students with their homework, questions during the lecture, such like that. And then another thing, um, I guess I did go up in front and teach the class a couple times. So that was a really good experience. I enjoyed that, even though it was towards the end and a couple of times. That was kind of like I did last quarter. And then we played one Jeopardy that. Okay, I'm just going to see what's going on here. I'm going to pause this. It said there was a network error, so I'm not really sure. I'm going to try refreshing the page. Let's see what happens. That I did um, another thing was just walking around during work time and um, helping students with their homework, questions during the lecture, such like that. And then another thing, um, I guess I did go up in front and teach the class a couple times. So that was a really good experience. I enjoyed that, even though it was towards the end and a couple of times. I made little handouts, kind of like I did last quarter. And then we played one Jeopardy that went a little funky. But yeah, <laughs> so that class, um, I really love that class. And I'm definitely going to use it. Like, other things I did, um, weekly meetings with Michelle, we tried to at least sort of meet and talk about how we were going to go about the class, the pre-algebra mainly. And then a couple things I sometimes would send emails um, just to like encourage students to go to the math center, chat with me because I'm such a great resource to, to meet with and, and help with math. And then just a couple other things. Okay, and then I put this in early on in the quarter. I kind of mentioned it briefly. I didn't do a lot of like one-on-one -on -one. at the beginning. I did try a couple things with um, a couple students, but um, things changed. I think overall the quarter went well. We got to do some reviews for tests, and that was that was really good. And I have like my learning and my challenges that I've I've had this quarter. My learning is patience. I think I put that last quarter too. It's like my biggest thing, like as a CNA, I have to have a lot of patience and also like being a teacher, it takes patience and it takes that energy to really be there. And then another thing, Michelle and I talked about this probably just a couple minutes ago that the students, they really have to practice and put time outside of class to be successful. That's what I noticed kind of that the students who put in that extra work are being more successful than some of the other students. So that's interesting. And then lastly, um, like learning kind of, um, my favorite thing with this class is just the connection I have with the students that we're all just kind of people. We talk about our lives and then we also do math as our, you know, there's the both and aspect of it. So I love, I love that. And then a couple of challenges that I put on here were I kind of overcommitted this quarter. I'm going to be honest, and I think Michelle knows this. And uh, just like balancing, I'm taking two summer classes, and I, I, I'm a CNA and math tutor. So you know, just figuring out putting my time and energy into each part was a challenge for me. And then, like I said, I didn't help with the college algebra. I was there for like a couple classes, and then we put our time and energy into um, pre algebra. So, yeah. Slides, what time is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, future of noise. I always put this slide in because I just love thinking about where this program's going. Um, since my last quarter, 
I always talk about Lee and how I think she's planning to um, go to UNO after another year. So I, I want to keep in touch and hear about that. And then um, that second thing I talked about in my last presentation, just like, you know, making fun activities at Metro like they do at UNO. Lastly, um, I'm sad I'm not there for the presentations, but I hope to maybe hear briefly what they were about because I love hearing how every experience is different. You know, each intern kind of does their own thing and you're like, huh, you learn from them. So that's sort of what I get excited about. All right, last, actually second to last slide. I thought I'd pop in a few things that I, this is also kind of a learning slide. You can just read it. I don't want to read too much. Say yes whenever you can, but also you know that balance. That's the biggest thing I've learned. Um, get out what you put in. That's kind of a statement you hear a lot, but those are just some advice to any interns wanting to be a part of it. You really give it a shot. Give it a shot. Last, I thought since I just tell you what I'm doing this next year. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, for the future, this next fall, I'm actually transferring. I don't know if you know Michelle, I haven't talked with her much, um, to Washburn University to finish pre-reqs and then start nursing school. Something I want to continue is even be a math tutor there, if possible. I I absolutely love love being part of this program and then I want to be nurse practitioner and then teach nurses is like because teaching is just such a, a a great field to go into and like you just can get so much out of it and helping students learn you know math or becoming a nurse you kind of have different aspects I think that's the end of my presentation. So, yep, that's the end. Thank you, guys, um, for this for this wonderful time. <laughs> All right, thank you, Abby. It has been just a fabulous semester working with you, and I know you will do great things. I agree. All right, good. Well, I'd love to ask Abby questions. Oh, I got to turn that. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, Abby's been with us since the winter quarter. I guess she started when Lee did as well. Um, so Lee's going to continue on. But yeah, Abby worked with Nathan and Michelle. So as you can see, you, 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 you got a good impression of her there. So I think she'll she'll be great in what she does. We'll miss her. I did. I did hope she was going to change her mind. <laughs> I'm a math teacher, but that's OK. <laughs> yeah, she's going to teach the nurses. Yeah, good. All right. Well, I think Brad is up. Um, Brad, I'm just going to pull your um, presentation up. First, I'm going to share the screen again. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not. Wait. I'm going to pin the camera one. I'm just going to click slideshow. Does that work? Okay. And I'll put that up here <laughs> okay where things went the time limit was too short <laughs> <Been> there <laughs> well now you're a teacher <laughs> um, so yeah uh as i stated earlier my name is brad um emily van hook was my uh mentor for this quarter um like the rest of you i had, i got into teaching for one sole purpose of making students cry it's my favorite activity uh and it's happened more frequently than i really would have thought of for one quarter um one of the first things me and emily talked about was math anxiety how students have a lot of baggage with math um how even though math can seem like a boring subject to many it is a war zone of emotion that you have to sort through while also trying to get an equation you know memorized right so the first thing I wanted to talk about was how to work a computer. <laughs> Is it just that? Okay. So emotions, right? We all have them, students especially. Um, a lot of baggage with math and all that. Uh, one thing I learned from one of the teachers I worked with, uh, I did a lecture class. It was 0900 based arithmetic with Bruce Bender. 
or just Bruce, if you know him. Um, and one of the things he talked to me very early on about was when you're teaching a class, 10% of it is math and 90% of it is just communicating, just talking. And if you don't have the skills to communicate, you could be the best mathematician in the world. They're not going to be able to learn from you. So one of the main things I tried to do over this quarter was establish not so much routine, but more so um, working on my mannerisms in order to help uh, better my communication skills with students. Because I noticed the first thing I did was one-on-one -on -one tutoring in a modular class, um, no lecture at all. It was from minute three of that class, someone raised their hand, I went over, and thus was my first one-on-one -on -one session with a student. Um, one thing I noticed really early on was this is not like teaching a friend. This is, you know, it's very, very different. Um, so this first quarter, I was more so looking at how can I communicate with students better? How can I, um, in a time efficient manner, not, you know, spending the whole class period with one student, uh, give them the information they need while responding to what emotions and what feedback they're giving me to help keep us guided, right? Because some negative emotions can kind of lead us off track and then it's not time efficient, right? Especially when I have a class of, you know, 23 students and three of them have their hands raised at a time, it's important to be time efficient. Um, one of the tools I found that made it a lot easier to kind of communicate with students, um, that especially showcased at the Math Fest we went to in Philadelphia, um, was inquiry-based inquiry learning, where instead of, you know, lecture, 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 do it on your own, it's a lot of show me what you have, I'm going to teach you just the smallest amount I can, very focused, um, not bore them with you know, lectures that they don't need or tangents and things like that, and then go right back to them and have them try to apply it. Or if they ask me a question, rather than responding immediately with an answer, leave with more questions and try to guide them to an answer rather than you know, just give it straight out to them. I'm you know, preaching to the choir. You guys know this way better than I do, but that was one of my big takeaways from this quarter especially. Um, another thing with IBL, and this was a, a statistic I got at MathFest, was in a lecture-based class, 90% um, of the floor time, the talking time, was by the professor, and 10% or less was actually feedback from the students, be it in questions, board work, uh, examples, presentations, things like that. Um, whereas in an IBL course, uh, lecture time and um, professor floor time is generally around 40% of class time with the rest being student interaction, either with the professor or uh, inter-studentally, uh, or with a lot of board work, um, or examples, things like that. What results from this is uh, when you're in a lecture class, it, it can tend to feel like once you get kind of behind, it's not worth your time to ask a question. You don't want to waste other people's time because it's only 10% of time that students get. Um, so you get a lot of mad anxiety, you feel a little hopeless, things like that. The basics was students didn't feel confident um, after a lecture because they felt like they had to go home and apply everything and make sure they did it right when they were listening. Uh, the difference with an IBL based class would be you start the activity, it warms you up, um, it would kind of lead into the lecture. The lecture time was very focused so students could say, I need to memorize that 20 minutes of lecture rather than that 70. Um, and they were able to apply that much more confidently and feel more, even if they weren't right more so, uh, they felt more confidently and were able to, um, if they weren't right, they were more able to ask for questions. They were more able to ask a student for help. Um, it gave them the skills they needed to apply what they learned. And even if they didn't learn it correctly the first time, they had the confidence to reteach it, relearn it, ask for questions, which I think is a more important tool than learning it off the first try. Um, especially for uh, underclassmen who are in lower level math classes where asking for help can be a little hard and in larger math classes especially. Um, so that was one of the important things I saw with uh, inquiry-based learning. The other part, uh, talking about emotions and communication, sometimes we get negative emotions in the classroom and rather than just shutting those down, because oftentimes that can lead to more negative emotions, um, I, in my experience with our crying students and our angry students and our hopeless students was trying to switch that in a different direction of sort of redirecting what would be a negative emotion like anger, nervousness, doubtfulness into a way that is productive for them, right? So one of the big examples I like to look at is nervousness is not your body shutting down and, you know, 
quitting out of the fight. It's your heart starts racing because you need more blood to solve whatever whatever chomp bleh, whatever challenge you're going to be facing. You know, you get all jumpy, things like that. It's your body preparing you. So anytime I talk to a student who's nervous for a test, or they say, Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna pass, and I'll be like, Well, study sports night. The nervousness is not you failing, the nervousness is you getting ready and like your body rising up to the challenge. Um, and that can also kind of be applied to anger. This was something a little bit shocking. A uh, student failed the test twice um, and they asked me for help and we reviewed. They were getting very upset, which I get. It was exponent rules. They're very <laughs> infuriating. Um, but I was talking to them and at first their, their sort of uh, resentment was towards me and the other uh, the teacher in the class. And I kind of was like, well, you know, this math, whatever, whatever, it's not easy, but you know, whatever. And eventually without too many details, it got to the point where we were both like really getting at the problems like, well, this is this because this and it's, it's stupid, whatever. And then we started getting questions right because it started to stick more. And rather than this anger being, I'm done with this, let's throw it away. It's I'm gonna get this, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna make this. You know, it, yeah, and so uh, that's just another example of trying to turn around those negative emotions. Because if you try to just you know cancel it out, throw it away, that doesn't exactly help the student. It just gets put in the back. They're going to go home and think about it again anyway. So using that class time to kind of redirect that, I found was a very important tool. Um, I did four, uh, I guess, eight hours of modular classes a week. Almost all of that was one-on-one -on -one time. Um, one student had cried three times in one class period, but there were many, many other uh, instances of just kind of hopelessness failing, whatever. But we got there in the end, asked a lot of questions, and by the end of it, I did feel a lot more comfortable helping students. Um, and I feel like my uh, general ability to help students had improved during the quarter, which communication was my main uh, goal for this quarter, and I think I admit that. Um, yeah, I guess that, that is kind of the last slide I just talked about. Pulled a little bit of a chase there. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's most of my takeaways. Philly trip was great. A lot of the mathematics might have gone over my head, but trying to get to the teaching seminars makes me excited to be uh, the next one in Kearney in October. Um, but yeah, that was this quarter. Brad, can you talk a little more about what you did in the 0900 class? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I guess I did kind of skip over that. So the 0900 class was a lecture class. I believe it had nine or 10 students in it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we keep saying these numbers like everybody knows what we're talking about. What is Math 0900? Do you remember the title yeah. of it? So Math 0900 was basic arithmetic. Um, pre-algebra starts at 0910. Yeah. So this is before pre-algebra. Yeah. Our last lesson is multiplying signed numbers, um, you know, negative to positive, negative to negative, things like that. Starting out the class is rounding, place values, things that we don't even think about anymore. It's like breathing to a lot of people who are, you know, involved somewhat in math. Um, so going back and helping teach that class was like trying to explain a color, you know. <laughs> so what's the tens, thousands place value? I said, oh, it's that one. How do I know it's that one? That's a great question, you know. <laughs> How do you say a color without saying the color? Um, so that was a really eye-opening experience uh and it was humbling because even though i could explain you know quadratics and whatever whatever it was getting down to the really basics and trying to break that down for someone who might have never heard of it maybe english wasn't their first language things like that i thought that was a really cool experience um i started out as just an observer in that class i didn't make any lessons um i didn't really uh i didn't give lectures for a little bit and then uh, Bruce and I were talking, Bruce is the teacher of the class, and we decided it would be a good idea to uh, have me make a lesson plan, do a 30 minute lecture on fractions, which what a great lesson to give me for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> fractions. Um, like throwing you in the deep end. So yeah, boy, yeah, right? yeah. But luckily it was just reading fractions. We didn't really have to simplify fractions. It was very basic. Numerator, denominator, divisor line, three fifths, here's a pie. You know what I mean? Um, so I did give a 30 minute lecture on that. Uh, it, yeah. I was told it went well, but a lot of students kind of gave me some fish eyes. And I was like, well, <laughs> hope you guys know what fractions are now. Bye. <laughs> but um, no, 
no, by the end, uh, I did get to see the test that they were able to take, and it seemed that it went very well. So that was good. Um, other than that, uh, as we were talking about earlier, IBL courses versus lecture classes, students definitely in the lecture class weren't as prone to response, um, bar a few that were very confident, uh, for better or for worse. And so uh, what I tried to do for some of the students who didn't get that kind of interaction, I actually volunteered, or not volunteered, I got paid, but I went to the math center for three hours before that class started and invited all the students to come down if they needed help, things like that, to kind of, you know, bridge that gap between lecture time and, uh, you know, interaction time. Um, in the over 100, I did have unit plans for some, our uh, integer unit, which was this last unit, uh, but with MathFest, uh, my catalytic converter being stolen, it got a little bit hard to get to, uh, get to teaching that. But um, I look forward to giving more lectures uh, in 0900 class in the future, in an 0900 class, a basic arithmetic class in the future. Um, because it was, I, I had plenty of experience with the one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring at this point, but lectures would be my next spot that I would improve. So, yeah, that would be 0900. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Well, uh, there's one last little thing I wanted to show. Um, here, back at your phones up here. So we've heard about MacFest. Um, I put together, I'm just going to share this. I just put together a super basic presentation. I copied and pasted things that you interns sent to me. <laughs> so we actually showed some of these pictures already, and some of these are from Chase. Um, so I just wanted to give people little snapshots of what this conference was. I did not go, but it, as you heard, um, the Brad, Chase, and Lee were able to go to this conference um, in Philadelphia. Dr. Michael Matthews was there as well uh, from UNO. Sydney and Danny are two UNO students that were there. I think there are a couple other UNO professors. Um, Dr. Gallagher, who I don't know, but Chase got to meet him or her. I don't know if that is. Um, and then Dr. Jacobovich was there. Dr. Yeah, so I think that was a pretty cool experience. I think everybody had some kind of uh, dramatic travel story to tell yep. later. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Flights being delayed and people sleeping in airports and things like that, but you all made it. <laughs> So I'm really glad. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm really glad all three of you just kind of took that risk of, sure, I'll travel for a conference. We've been wanting to do something like this since 2019, but we haven't been able to. So it was, I'm, I'm glad for you that you got to go. So here are just some, some pictures that were sent to me. I can't really narrate these because I don't know, but I think, Chase, you said that was a view out of your hotel room. Yeah, so that's uh, Brad and I's hotel view. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Some people not think buildings are cool, but I think it's cool. <laughs> um, and then the other side is the entrance into Chinatown. Chinatown. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Good. I, I don't have all your pictures, but I just have a few. I think this one was sent to me by Lee. And again, I don't know which conference was which. They, they kind of all look the same of back of chairs, but there's a there's a conference all there. Um, we saw this picture that Lee shared. It looks like there was these poster sessions of walking around. And did you guys do much with with that walking around and reading people's posters? Uh, we walked around the. Uh, I think this is from the second day. Mm -hmm. They had a setup like this on the first day, which uh, I think we stopped at like every booth. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be like um, book. Writers, ah, and okay. employers. I got offered a job by the uh, <laughs> what? NSA. Yeah. NSA. Yeah. NSA. Really? Yeah. 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 NSA. I go up to the booth. Like, you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Wow. You All right. right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> We're the NSA. Yes, we can. <laughs> wow. Um, cool. No, that's funny. Uh, I got plenty of tote bags. There you go. Yeah, so, lots of swag. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Good. 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 Um, yeah, I just grabbed a few quotes. So I, I assigned all three of the interns to do a longer reflection this week because of their conference. They had a lot to say. So I didn't attribute names to each of these, but um, it looks like somebody said, the four other interns and I tried not only to attend conferences together, the sessions together, but talk at length about our goals within noise and professionally. I think that was you, Brad. And then we saw this picture. I think that's 
I can't tell who's who. <laughs> Danny is with her back. Yeah. Okay, that's Danny, Danny and that's Sydney. That, that okay, so that's the two of them. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And they were, I guess they put a poster together about, um, and I already forgot the title of their presentation, Lee told us, but um, something about helping students in the class. Do you remember? Yeah, they, yeah, they started, so they, they started, you know, offering um, like supplemental instruction, basically study hours aligned with the classes that they were interning in. Mm -hmm. um, and they would have like 30 people and it was just you basically hurting cats. Yeah. Know, questions yeah. everywhere. And so they decided to kind of form a structure to it yeah. on how they would support students that came to those things. So they were kind of sharing the feedback that they got from okay. students coming to get math help to a like very structured environment. That sounds like a co -rec. Great. Yeah, that's that's what that sounds is. Sounds a lot like a correct. Yeah. Good. Or kind of like what you were trying to do, Brad, is have open hours in the math center for people to. I mean, you didn't get thirty people, I think, but um, sure, if you had, you might have had to have a more structured plan. <laughs> so okay, good. Well, I'm glad they were able to go and, and present that. Um, here's some more backs of chairs. <laughs> all right, here's a longer one. Okay, one big thing I took away from this conference is all that I still have to learn. All of you said something like this, so. Um, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said I understood everything that was said in each session and lecture, but finally being confused was very eye-opening and made me realize all I want to learn about math and how there's so much more to it than I ever thought. So I didn't realize how math heavy this one, this yes. conference was. It, it wasn't a math teaching conference. It's no. just all math. So that's cool. That's cool. Good. Um, here's a couple more. So I think, is this the estimate? Yeah, this is the estimate fund we was talking about. Yeah, Jason sent me this one. So this is your, this is your team that you circled. Right. <laughs> you guys aren't in here, are you? No, that's the, oh, okay. But you guys are second. <laughs> yeah. um, second. Okay. All right. And Brad, tell me what's going on. So, so I didn't know this picture was even taken. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Lee right behind me. <laughs> Um, so this was, we were looking for something to do our first night there. There were no conferences. There was like a check-in and a little opening. Yep. And then we were like, well, let's explore Philly. So we yes. found a, uh, a large arcade mm -hmm. and cool. decided, you know, that's some nightlife. Okay. Yeah. So this is not math related. This is just you exploring well, all sorts of math and video games. Sure. Yeah, okay. so so small, healthy video games. I mean, it, was, it was a, a, a tempo. Yeah. Okay. Got it. There you go. Okay, cool. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it was a bond so that we nice. could professionally. Hundred percent. Yeah, great. All right. Oh, and I had to include Brad and Chase on a swing. So <laughs> we took that one, and it's a live photo. So you're swinging. In the mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And um, Chase, tell me what's in what's this other that one? That is this uh, city hall, I believe. Cool. Uh, I was just walking back to my hotel, and I saw lots of people over there. Cool. So I just walked through. Sounds good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, your hotter than blazes. Yeah, it was like your team. hundred degrees. Yeah. Like hundred seventy-five. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. And then I think this might be the last one. What I'm most grateful for are the connections I made and many professional and friendly connections with people, and I'm excited to see where they come. So, yeah, I'm happy for all of you. Now you know each other. You have each other's contact information, regardless of which directions you all go in. I, I do hope that you'll stay in touch with each other. Um, I think I'm, every time we do these presentations or anything about noise, I'm like, I really could have used that <laughs> thinking back. And so I'm happy for you all that you have this community. So, all right, I think that's the last one. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. I'm gonna stop our share. So I think I will um, stop our recording. So that's gonna be the end of our official um, official time here. We have donuts. Um, people can hang out and, and chat for a bit, but our that's the end of our official presentation. So Chase, you're moving on to UNO. Um, Brad will be back. In the fall, you're going to work with Robinson Luke at the mm -hmm. Fort Campus. Lee will be back working with Amanda Olson at Elkhorn. Um, let's see. We also have another intern returning. Her name is Rainey. So she'll be at Elkhorn again with Sam Samuel. And we have two new interns joining us. They are, they are not here today. Um, Ashton Hitz will be working at South with Michelle. And then um, Michelle up Benihani will be working with Rachel, so um, just for the for all of you interns, I did email you a calendar invitation for an orientation Zoom I'm going to have with those two new interns, and I can say things and explain, but I think hearing from you all is just really 
really good. So um, I think Chase, you already said that you could come. So if you're able to attend that and just kind of share some of your experiences, I think that'll kind of get them excited about, about what's coming. So, all right, good. Well, Lee, thanks so much for zooming in and thanks Manar for sticking with us. I'm gonna end the Zoom meeting here, um, but yeah, take care and have a good I'm little really break before. They so. Before they leave. Oh, before they leave. Yes, Kelly, All go right. ahead. No good. About the, the noise, uh, re, not the, the kickoff. Oh, the kickoff. So yeah. On, yeah. On, on right, right. Uh, two, weeks from, two weeks from today, um, you're all invited to UNO um, to do a little noise kickoff. So um, it's eight o'clock, right? It's eight to nine. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's early, but it's early breakfast. Um, I sent that RSVP. Did you send that out? To the I did. Too? Okay, good. Yeah. Is it like 304 Roskin? Yeah, 304 Roskin. There's free parking in the East Garage there. But um, we'd love to see you. If you can't make it, no big deal. But we um, we kind of try to set the stage a little bit, and especially with you coming over to UNO. So, um, yeah. Did you guys get, did I send, I know I sent it to the mentors. Does that sound familiar? The kickoff? I, I think so. uh, I got an email for a breakfast. Yeah, that that's what it is. Saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a breakfast. So, okay. Anyway, check your email for that. I sent, I sent a lot of things. So I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I've seen it. I, I, I had that RSVP thing set to send. I mean, I just forgot to send it. Yeah, it was so there. I yeah. Push the date of the RSVP back because I forgot to send it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for, for Metro people on Zoom, that's Friday, August 26th. We're not officially back right. until Monday, August 29th. And for you students, your classes don't start until the Tuesday after Labor Day. So you might be in like vacation mode, yeah. but anyway, just if you attend, office. we'll we'll pay you for it. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's nice. You know, it'll be like this kind of gathering only more food <laughs> um, and more people from UNO to, to meet. So, all right. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Right. So no, it's good, it's good. All right, all right. Anything else, Manar or Lee, before I close this out? Okay, all right. Thank you, bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. bye. All right, and I'm in.